Takashi and Machiko, who just got married, are at a bar called Quindesim. Desim, the bartender, makes them play darts for their lives, and each dart that hits their partner hurts them. As the game goes on, Takashi remembers that he thought Machiko was having an affair, but she said she wasn't. He tries to win the match by delivering the knockout blow. At the end of the game, it is shown that they both died in a car accident because Takashi was jealous, and Machiko later says that she only married Takashi for his money. After stopping Takashi from attacking Machiko more, Desim sends Takashi and Machiko to the elevators. Takashi comes back to life, but Machiko is sent back to the void. Nana brings a woman with black hair and no name or memory to the Quindesim, where she is put in charge of helping Desim. Nana takes the woman backstage to watch Machiko and Takashi play darts while she explains how the games work. After the game is over, the woman says what she thinks. She thinks that Machiko had a one-night stand that she regretted and that she lied about her child's father to save Takashi's soul. This surprises Desim, and he says he's sorry if he was wrong about something. Two more teens who can't remember anything come to the Quindesim for another game. Ten pin bowling is a part of this game, so it was chosen. The balls hold each other's hearts, which beat when their owners feel happy or sad. As the game goes on, the two characters become friends and start to remember bits and pieces of their pasts. The boy remembers being a college student named Shaidru Miura, while the girl remembers being a childhood friend of Shaidru's named Chisato Miyazaki who moved away. Then, Shaidru remembers that he and Chisato both died on the same bus, and Chisato remembers more about herself. After they won the match, Shaidru asks Chisato out for a short date. At the elevators, they say goodbye, happy that they got to spend time together. Then it turns out that Chisato is Shaidru's other childhood friend, Mai Takata, who had plastic surgery to make herself look like Chisato to get Shaidru's attention. Both are going to be born again. Teenager Yasuke Tateshi and TV star Misaki Takabana show up in the Quindesim. Misaki is sure that they are taking part in a hidden camera show, so she tells Yasuke how to act. They play a fighting game in an arcade and act like they are fighting. Yasuke wins the first round, while Misaki has flashbacks to partners who are mean to her. She begs Yasuke to let her win the next round, so Desim turns on a device that makes Yasuke's joystick not work right. Misaki moves on to the next round, and Yasuke has a flashback of his own to a troubled childhood. They find out that they are not on a TV show, and Misaki starts to worry that if she loses, she will be killed. Misaki does a special move, but Desim disables her joystick. He tells her that he has to do this so he can see the darkness in a soul and judge it. Misaki wants to win so badly that she attacks Yasuke physically and knocks him out. Even though Misaki feels bad about what she did, Desim forces her to keep playing the game. Yasuke wakes up and uses his own special move to fight back, causing a double knockout. They both find out later that they have died. Yasuke killed himself, and Misaki's assistant killed her out of anger. Yasuke comes back to life, and Misaki is sent to the void. A while later, Nana is seen reading Chabot, a book for kids. The assistant with black hair has been having recurring dreams about a boy and a girl. He is surprised to see the same girl on a panel that Nana asked Desim to put behind the bar. Two new people walk into the bar, a man and a young boy. Desim is surprised when the man says that he has been there before and starts to act violently. While Desim is holding the man down, the boy, who turns out to be another arbiter named Jinty who is just pretending to be a child, puts Desim and the assistant to sleep. Jinty says that Desim didn't judge his dead assistant well enough. Jinty attacks Desim for not following orders, but Nana stops her and tells Desim that the guests were part of a test. She says Desim didn't know the boy didn't have any memories because he was paying attention to the man who was a dummy with memories. Later, when the assistant is dreaming about Jimmy and Chabot, Nana is seen reading the book Chabot, whose cover shows the same boy and girl. Mayu Arita, an excited schoolgirl, and Harada, a member of a popular boy band, go to Jinty's Arbiter Bar, where they are forced to play Twister. Mayu is excited to sing with a member of her favorite band, but Harada is more worried about seeing his girlfriend again. When Mayu and Harada ask for a break, Jinty ups the stakes by making the weather on the game mat change from warm to cold with each panel they step on. Mayu and Harada find themselves in a dangerous situation above a pit of spikes. Mayu gives up, and just as Harada is about to push her off to save himself, she lets herself fall. Harada grabs her because he feels bad that he caused one of his ex-girlfriends to kill herself. Mayu lets go to save him, but she lands safely on rubber spikes instead of dying. Then, Mayu remembers slipping on some soap and dying, while Harada remembers being killed by his girlfriend in revenge for his ex-suicide. Girlfriend's sisters after Mayu puts on a kimono, Harada becomes interested in her, and the two of them work together on a concert for the Arbiter staff. 
the assistant finds the Chavot book, which has the same story as the one in her dreams. This helps her remember some things and realize that she is dead. When she asks about the book, Decim tells her that it belongs to Quinn, who used to be the arbiter of the Quindecim. In a flashback to Decim's training, Nana asks him why, while watching one of Quinn's death games, he didn't use his remote device to change the outcome. He said that he admires people who have done a lot in their lives, which got Nane's attention. After leaving her job as an arbiter, Quinn now works for the Information Bureau. While drinking with Nane, Quinn notices that Decim is a strange judge of how people feel. In the meantime, Decim shows his assistant his treasure, which is a group of dummies dressed up as former guests who have been sent to the void. He does this so they don't get completely thrown away and forgotten. At Nane's request, Desim gets a young man named Shimada and a detective named Tatsumi as new guests. One of them is thought to be a killer. Shimada finds a bloody knife among his things while looking for a way out. He doesn't know where it came from. As the two guests play air hockey, Shimada gradually thinks about taking care of his younger sister, and Tatsumi thinks about how his wife was killed. With the two players remembering more things that make them want to run away, especially Shimada's memory of his sister being attacked, Desim changes the rules of the game so that scored pucks hurt the player's organs. In the meantime, the woman with black hair asks to see Desim's memories and finds out that both Shimada and Tatsumi have killed people. As Shimada and Tatsumi's game goes on, Shimada realizes he has already killed someone, the man who attacked his sister S.A.E. Tatsumi also remembers killing the person who killed his wife and figuring out that the killer was Shimada. Tatsumi seems to have watched as SAE was attacked so that he could get enough information to judge C's attacker. Shimada, on the other hand, thought Tatsumi was just helping SAE attack people, so he stabbed him to death. Desim tells Shimada that he can punish Tatsumi by stabbing the pucks that hold Tatsumi's organs, but his assistant says that he can't do that because he can't judge people's souls based on their memories alone. She tries to get Shimada to stop punishing Tatsumi, but Shimada gives in to his anger and kills Tatsumi. Desim is surprised by his assistant's claims that people are more complicated than they look. At the end of the episode, a shot of the devil on top of the elevator suggests that both Shimada and Tatsumi were taken to the void. After the last game, Desim starts to have doubts about his ability to judge people. Nana tells him that he still needs to judge his assistant, because if he doesn't, she will turn into a fool. He says he doesn't want to hear her memories, so Nana sends him a new guest, an old artist named Sachiko Yamura. Desim, his assistant, and the woman all use cards with designs that reflect their own interests to play old maid. Sachiko figures out from the images they see that she has died, and the assistant remembers her name is Chiyuki after Sachiko tells them how the children in the Chavot story felt about her. While Sachiko politely leaves to be reborn, Nane's boss Oculus absorbs Clavis the elevator attendant's memories and finds out that Desim has human emotions. Nane, on the other hand, tells Quinn to find Chiyuki's memories. Mayu and Harada are still at Jinti's bar because they have not been sent away yet. Jinti tells Mayu that she can trade Harada's unconsciousness for the loss of another human soul. At the same time, Desim asks Chiyuki to show him how to ice skate, having noticed that it was a big part of her memories. As Chiyuki skates, she starts to remember that she used to be a professional ice skater until a bad knee injury forced her to quit. This made her very sad and led to her death by suicide. Desim and Chiyuki have one last drink together, but he puts her to sleep and then asks Quinn to send him Chiyuki's memories. Mayu, on the other hand, has chosen to stay with Harada and share his fate instead of letting someone else die in his place. Jinti asks her why she loves Harada so much, and she just says that it's her choice. He sends them off together in the elevator, and when they turn back into dummies, Harada wakes up and gives them one last hug before they go into the void. Oculus questions Nane's ways of doing things to show that arbiters are not stupid. Desim takes Chiyuki to her old house to show her that her mother still cares about her. This makes Chiyuki think twice about trying to kill herself. Desim offers Chiyuki the chance to go home if she gives up the life of someone else, and she comes dangerously close to taking the deal. But since everyone she meets in the Quindesim has someone who loves them, she decides not to. This makes Desim feel strong and painful emotions, which she shares with Chiyuki as part of her judgment. Nana watches what happens through Oculus, which shows that you have to understand human suffering to be able to judge people. Desim tries in vain to smile as he watches Chiyuki leave to be reborn. Nana and the other Arbiters think about what will happen to the system if Arbiters learn how people act. Later, Desim will barely smile at new guests at the Quindesim, and the bar will have a mannequin dressed as Chiyuki. This was it for today, subscribe to my channel to watch more recaps.